this video, I will show you how to make your first beat using the SP404 Mark II. Let's begin. Trantendo. So the first thing we need to do is turn on the Roland SP404 Mark II. So I'm gonna turn that thing on and allow it to load up. The process in itself is pretty cool. I like the way the screen loads up. By default, you can uh, change out the graphics and, and there you go. Well, the SP404 is now loaded. And the second thing you need to do is have sounds. You need a whole bunch of sounds so you'll be able to use this. The Roland SP404 Mark II is a sample base sequencer effector. So uh, make sure that you grab sounds. The max amount of sounds that you can use or the SD card can only be as big as 32 gigs. You do have 16 gigs built in memory on the Roland SP404 Mark II. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and insert the SD card on the side here and we can go from there. The, the next thing that you do when you're on the Roland SP404, uh, you'll notice that it will load sounds. Right now I have some sounds loaded up, but uh, what I'm gonna do is press shift and project and you'll see things that, then you'll see on the SP404 where your projects are right now. So I'm actually on number three. Uh, if you, you want to load up your default sounds, you can load up the project and all the sounds, by the way, uh, that are on the SP404 are on the hard drive that's built inside. So uh, what I'm going to do is show you this. So if you don't want to, if you want to start a new project, just press shift and sub pad, which gives you access to your projects and press like, I don't know, any other number. I'm just going to press four because that gives me a clean slate. So do that. And now we can start. So how do you load sounds? Well, press shift and pad 14 and it will bring you into this menu right here where you have import from SD card, export to SD card, format SD card, and cancel. Format will erase everything off of your SD card, so you wanna be careful not to choose that if you don't want to do that. And exporting will take everything from the hard drive that's on the SP404 and put it on the SD card. So let's go ahead and choose import uh, because we wanna pick some sounds out, right? So you have samples, project, and cancel. So I'm gonna press sample. And now I'm gonna go into here and load some sounds. So I'm selecting some sounds right now. Uh, you can navigate uh, either way. I'm gonna show you how to navigate here. Uh, you have this up uh, sign right here, which will take you to uh, back into your root. So I'm gonna go into import and then select Alchemist Secret Sauce, boom. And then I'm going to the drum kits. I'm gonna select the first drums over here. And the next thing you wanna do is audition it. So how do you audition the sound so you know what's in here? Uh, just select the pad. I'm gonna go ahead and select pad 13 because I like my drums to be over here. And we're gonna select a kick. So select a kick. You don't necessarily have to do it this exact way. And then every single time you want to load in sounds, you have to rinse and repeat that process. So just keep that in mind when you are working on this stuff here. So let's go back in here and get us a snare. I'm gonna import, samples. Yeah, you have to menu dive a lot on here. That's kind of a downside of this. Uh, hopefully they will change it to where it will be back on the folder. Uh, and I'm gonna go back in here and grab a snare. Select the pad, because that was something I just messed up on. And I'll just continue this process. Okay, so now we have sounds on the pads. And if I was to drum on the pads, you'll notice that the sound keeps cutting off because the gate mode is on by default. So just select the pad and hit gate so that your sample will play all the way through and do that all the way. All right, gate is on. And now everything is good. The other thing that you could do uh, when you are playing with your samples is you can adjust the start and end point and you can uh, adjust it by using the control knobs over here, which these control knobs are very important. This is the volume knob too, by the way. So uh, what I wanna do is 
zoom in. So I'm going to use the push to enter knob and turn it to the right to zoom in and get a better look at it. And I will adjust it right here. So I'm going to adjust the transient. It has a little bit of a delay at the beginning of it. And then I can adjust the end point. So let's go ahead and adjust the end point. You know, you, and they, again, use this right here so you can uh, navigate and see what you're doing. And you can see uh, the starting end point and the uh, marker go through and play it like the playhead. If you don't want any space on it, you can click on the push enter knob and then you will be introduced to things like truncate, which uh, trims everything outside of the starting end point. I'm going to go ahead and do that so you can see it. It makes it, uh, gets rid of that extra space. You can also normalize. Normalizing will bring everything that is low in volume to zero dB. So that's what normalize means. And emphasize uh, does the intense opposite of that. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and cancel because I'm fine with that. And then you can adjust everything else. Also, you can adjust by pressing shift and pitch and speed. Uh, you can adjust the envelopes too. So I can adjust the attack if I don't like that, the way that snare sounds. And I can give it some release. I can also do hold. And you can do that for all your sounds just in case. Another thing, uh, a lot of people want to know how to pitch their sample. So uh, you would hit pitch and speed by itself to bring you into this screen. So let's go ahead and do that again. And you can adjust the speed. So basically lowering the speed will make it slower. So I like that, and you can also adjust the volume too. Uh, you can also do other things as well, but we'll get into that a little later. So then go ahead and adjust that back to 127. Another thing, if you want to mess with fixed velocity, because these 16 pads are velocity sensitive, uh, you can adjust that too as well uh, by going into shift and pad one let me exit out of that pad one and turn fixed velocity on or off or on you also have 16 velocity so if you select a certain pad and you press pad a ship if you press shift and pad two you can uh, do 16 velocity so just like on the mpc if that is something you desire and press exit Alright, so I like this sample. I'm going to go ahead and load it into pad number one. And pad number one will be blinking uh, red. For those who didn't know, I didn't mention that earlier. So, boom. Once you select that, of course, it's going to go ahead and load the sample in. And operation is complete. So the next thing I will show you is how to set up the BPM. Because I wondered how to do this myself. And I think it's important that I show you. So what I'm going to do here is go into pattern, select, pattern, edit. And you can use control knob number one uh, to adjust the BPM. So it's just important that you do that, especially if you're going to mess with loops and you want your loops to be stretched out in a certain manner. And so we're just going to set that up for success here. And then you can just exit out and press pat and then press pattern select. And you'll see that your BPM is at 90. All right, now it's finally time to chop some samples up. So from here, you have your sample. And we're going to chop that up uh, again. Remember, you can pitch stuff up and pitch stuff down at your leisure. And and that's what I'm going to do here. All right. So the sample is on pad number one. And we're going to chop it up. So press shift and start and end. And it will bring you into chop mode. Now, in chop mode, you can do a few things. And I, I think this is pretty cool. Uh, you could do lazy chop, which is something. So now we have these chops.
but say you know you want to adjust some of those markers that you lay so press the pad and use the push enter knob and press left or right on there so you can zoom in and then you'll see that you can adjust the markers with using c2 or c3 which is control 2 control 3 Now there are other things that you can do. I can go in the menu and delete all markers. So let's, let's delete all the markers. Uh, and I'll show you this way too as well, which is pretty cool. Uh, so if you pick out a sample that is a one bar loop, a two bar loop, and a four bar loop, there's a mode that I've seen on the MPC that I use all of the freaking time. So what you wanna do to access this is push enter. So use the push enter knob, press down on it, and then go to auto mark and you'll see time divisions. Now you have access to different time divisions. You can go all the way from two to about 16. Uh, I just wanna use eight chops here, and then I'm gonna just press enter once I'm done, and it says current marks will be lost, and now I have chops. This is my preferred way of chopping. I just like BPM chopping because you get access to time stretching. So the next thing I'll do here is just press down on the push enter knob and then I'll assign it to pads. So I have these pads open here. All the green pads mean that they are open for sample. So all right, so everything is there and now I'll press enter to chop and it'll go through the process here and it says operation complete. So now I have all these pads ready. And of course you will have to ungate them if that's your style. And yeah, here we go. Now there will be an issue where the samples will overlap each other. Well, you can stop that from happening by doing this right here. And I'll show you. So by pressing shift, and pad number eight, it will take you into mute groups where you have different mute groups. You can go to uh, A through to J and I will just select all these samples right here. Boom. And now they are good to go. Once you're done, just hit exit. And now they are cutting each other off as I play through, which is important when you wanna go with some samples here. So the next thing you'll hear popping. So how do we get rid of that popping? Well, it's pretty simple to do that. All you have to do is press shift and pitch and speed, which allows you to get access to envelope mode. And then let's go ahead and adjust that by using the control knobs. And there's a pop at the end of that, so I'll just add a little bit more release so it doesn't pop. So I'm gonna continue the process of adjusting the samples and we'll go to the next part. All right, exit out of envelope mode. That's with the chops. Figure some stuff out. Uh, you can also do reverse over here. So that's a good way to kind of manipulate if a chop has some weird stuff going on. I want to lay that out. So it's a real simple process. I just go into pattern select mode and then make sure that you select a pattern. Uh, usually I just go and press record and press a pad right here. So I'm pressing pad number one. And I'm going to set it up uh, via here. Let's go ahead and set up four bars. Uh, you can set up your quantize by using the push enter knob. Uh, you can set it up to like 16 or whatever. I just turn it off because I don't like to. You also set up your BPM right here uh, in your pattern and go from that point right there. So now that we have that ready to go, I'll, I will just go ahead and press a shift and metronome because I will use metronome. Uh, let me go ahead. So now that we have that set up, I just press record and you'll notice something right here as it gives me a pre-count. Uh, I don't hear any metronome. I'm not the best at that. So let's go ahead and press shift and pad number nine and turn metronome on. And we're in record mode. 
Uh, I also have access to my pads. Uh, you can press the record button to go into rehearsal mode. I'm going to turn it up a little bit. All right. And then just when you're ready to record, just record. I'm going to let it roll one more time. Nice and janky. Let's practice. thing that you would like to do or you need to do is go into delete mode maybe I just don't like the way I laid out my drums so let's go ahead and mess with these pads and erase I just hold it down just make sure it goes through the loop and then you're good to go And from here, I can just continue to, to build the track up. And you hear everything is erased from my drums. So what if I like those drums and I just wanted to show you how to erase stuff? How could I bring that back? Well, there's a feature called undo. We're gonna check it out right here. So what I wanna do here is press shift and undo, which is pattern under pattern select. So what if you want to copy and paste a pattern to another pad? Well, there is a feature for that. So what you want to do is press copy and then press the pad that you want to copy and then press another pad right here and then confirm it operation complete. And there you go. You have the same pattern. And then what you could do is this right here. Uh, since, you know, if you want to go back to pattern number one, so you have your chops, you can do that. And you know, you can just erase, just like I was showing you in the race feature. So that's the easy way of doing things when you want to lay out your beat. So one of the most famous features on the Roland SP404 is the crazy effects. So how would you apply that to your beat? So what I'm gonna do here is this. So uh, I can go over here into pattern select cause you know, we need that. Uh, and then you have different effects that you can use. So by pressing MFX, uh, you can go through a, a whole bunch of them. You can uh, press each pad and audition them. So let's go ahead and uh, hear an effect on tracks. And you can adjust them like you see fit. So even though you don't see it, you see MFX on right now, uh, I can still adjust the effects right here. I got cassette sim on right now, and what I'm gonna do is just press the pattern. And adjust it to taste. Turn down the hiss. Turn up the ear. Now turn up the volume. But 
but that's not but that's not all though uh you have what you call bus effects so this pad right here says bus effects on it what i want to do is this right here i can go and press bus effects and choose which bus effect i want to use and then go into shift and pad 16 to adjust which pads have what effects so you can control them uh, via this right here this control knob which is control knob 3 and you can assign whatever effects you want you can also adjust the effects on the side over here where it says filter drive resonator delay uh, like if I wanted to change that into sync delay or, or if I want to change it to an isolator I can do that as well so you know these are things that you need to know uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do though is show you uh, the mute bus you can change the mute bus to whatever you want so let's go over here to mute bus again and then press down on here and then adjust it and then adjust them by using push enter so press down on the push enter if you're done once you're done i'm going to go ahead and set it back to all and then press down on the push enter knob and then you have the input effects bypass auto pitch vocoder so forth and you can just choose whatever one you want. I know a lot of people will wonder, like, how do you mix your beats and, and mix your patterns or whatever? Uh, you can do that uh, simply by going into pitch and speed, and you can adjust you know, each chop individually if you want to do it that way. So I would just uh, adjust accordingly. Another dope feature is resampling so i'm going to go ahead and show you that because that's an important feature to know so you can have more space for more samples okay so let's go ahead and resample the pattern so what i'm going to do is press pattern select and then go into resample then pick out a pad and then press the pattern number one And press record record complete and now on this pad right here pad number 10 I have that so there's a few things you can go from there you can delete all this stuff right here but I don't want to delete any of these chops because this has the drums in it but I just wanted to show you and then you can also make some adjustments to it you know the same thing starting endpoints just listen to it and and then uh, mess with the starting endpoints adjust it and then you know do like i was showing you at the very beginning of the video uh and then you know you have the sub sample and i i love i really love this feature right here it's, it's just it's just dope it's important for me to note that you can i repeat you can resample any sample on a pad uh, using an effect of your choice. So if you want to use a certain effect, you can and then resample it into a new pad. Uh, it, it works on both pattern select mode or pattern mode and on a regular pad if you're just in audition mode. So, so, so. tell me how you feel about this video. I definitely want to hear from you guys in the comments section. I'll tell you how I feel about this Roland SP404 Mark II. Uh, I quite enjoy it. There are a few things that I don't like about it, of course. Uh, the fact that it doesn't have any song mode is something that I should have mentioned in my review, but I wasn't thinking about that. But that is something that a lot of people complain about in terms of other groove boxes. But I know the vibes with these type of machines. There always will be a shortcoming, and it's also apparent and important that you reach out to the community over there at Roland and tell them what you want and do it in a in a nice way. I'm, I'm just saying, just be respectful. But other than that, uh, I hope everybody enjoyed the video and just leave a comment below if you want me to uh, cover a specific thing a little bit more in detail because uh, just because I ran through here and you know how to make your first beat doesn't mean that there aren't other things that need to be addressed. Yeah. But hope you enjoyed this video.